Time now for an in-depth look at the market news on this Friday. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, Global Strategist at Uanta Securities. Mr. Yu, good afternoon and thanks for coming on. Good afternoon. Well, stocks on Wall Street started out higher in Thursday's session, but closed lower in the end. Investors looking at the Biden administration's pandemic relief plans and other spending. Stocks in Korea today sharply lower. What's the story in the markets? Yes, uh, if you look at the uh, Dow Jones, it was quite strongly up at the beginning of the day and then uh, traded lower and closed lower. Uh, uh, it lost about 0.2%. S&P, same thing, about uh, losing 0.4%. And NASDAQ lost about 0.1%. 1, 0.1%. However, though, the uh, boosting measure would have benefited uh, the small and mid-cap companies. So Russell 2000 was up close to 2%. As far as Korea is concerned, um, there's continuation of net selling happening between the uh, institutional investors as well as foreign investors, where the net buyer continues to be the retail investors purchasing about 2.1 trillion won, and the institutional investors continue to sell about 1.4 trillion won. Um, in terms of the overall, uh, the sentiment-wise, it seems to be quite mixed because. Uh, Donald Trump impeachment process is still happening. Uh, while that um, coming president, Biden, has announced the uh, new package to support the businesses and household. And the detail of that is uh, it's called American Rescue Plan, uh, which includes 1,400 checks for most Americans and temporarily boost the unemployment benefits and rise, uh, a rise in a federal minimum wage to $15 per hour. Uh, so all that would have positive implications for the small and mid-cap companies, and that's the reason why the small cap and mid-caps were doing quite well yesterday. Uh, as far as Korea is concerned, I think this is just a tug of war between retail investors versus the institutional investors. Uh, institutional investors are continue to lose their money, and therefore they can only sell uh, while the retail investors continue to purchase on their own and the customer deposit remains to be above 70 trillion won, and we expect that numbers to continue to go up in the future. Well, you mentioned the stimulus in the U.S. Proposal, proposing uh, massive increases in spending. Oil prices on that news continuing to rise. Oil's come up quite a bit in the new year now at an 11-month high. Tell us about that move and your outlook. Sure. Uh, if you look at the overall uh, oil movement, it's all related to the economic boosting measures, and that would have positive implications for the domestic consumption and the economic growth rate of, uh, of the U.S., and that uh, does benefit the oil price movement. However, though, uh, we've been saying that uh, oil price rise tends to be directed by the uh, U.S. dollar depreciation. Uh, however, into the future, we don't see the depreciation to be that aggressive, given the fact the economy is recovering. Uh, and if that's the case, the oil price would have probably limited uh, upside potential in the future. Uh, on top of that, if you look at the electric car movement, uh, as well as the shale gas uh, production, uh, uh, which added quite significantly uh, overall, uh, which means that the supply and demand side would not be in favor of oil dollar keep rising above the $55 range. Uh, right now it's at around 53 uh, we think that the oil price will remain to be range bound between uh, 45 to 55 dollars in the future. And the Bank of Korea uh, decided to leave its policy rate where it is at half a percent, a record low. It's been at that level since the middle of last year. What do you make of the situation, Mr. Yu? Yes, if you look at the South Korea foreign investors and the capital uh, inflow seems to be still quite steady, despite that the Korean one have appreciated uh, so much. Um, and uh, because of that, if you look at the overall uh, liquidity condition, uh, it remains to be quite steady. And if you look at the inflation and pressure for Korea, it seems to be quite reasonably low. And um, the, the consumer price index were rising only by 0.5%. Core inflation, however, though it's going up, but uh, it still remains to be well below 1%. So all being said, that um, the Bank of Korea would remain to be uh, quite uh, ample in terms of liquidity injection. Uh, if you look at the M1 growth rate, it remains to be well above 26% year-on-year. 
uh, and the M2 growth rate remains to be about 9.7%. Uh, all in all, we don't think that the BOK will move any direction in terms of the liquidity injections or the interest rate side. Uh, we do expect that kind of 0.5% interest rate environment to remain where it is as long as U.S. keep their interest rate at zero rate. Got it. All right, Mr. Yu, thanks so much for sharing your insights with us today. As always, have a great weekend. Thank you very much. You too.